اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم و رحمت اللہ و برکاتہ and welcome to the day of Eid the day of celebration the day of festivity all praise be to Allah that he allowed us to reach to this blessed day of Eid having completed the month of Ramadan and as I began we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala our merciful creator to accept all of our fastings in this blessed month our standing for prayers our recitation of the Quran the supplications that we engaged in on a nightly basis the charity we gave locally and overseas to help the less fortunate believers around the world and in short we ask Allah to accept all of our acts of worship and that Allah give us the opportunity to once again see the next month of Ramadan you know we lost many community members I'm sure this Ramadan around the world over these last two years of the pandemic we've lost countless believers in many other regions that we can probably never even imagine and we ask God to shower his mercy upon all of these individuals and that God keep the deceased in the company of the Prophet and the Ahlul Bayt peace be upon them in their Barzakh realm and that Allah join them with their families on the day of judgment on that time when we will be grouped with our Imam and with one another we ask God to allow us to also be a part of the gatherings of the Prophet and the Ahlul Bayt peace be upon them in paradise you know for this Eid message I want to reflect on the status of our beloved Prophet Muhammad may God's peace and blessings be upon him and his family in paradise now obviously we would accept the fact that he will have the highest station there is no doubt about that and in fact as I begin you know let me let me mention this tradition in which one of the companions of the beloved Prophet Muhammad may Allah bless him and his family named Thu'ban he had a great love and an affection for the Prophet Muhammad may Allah bless him and his family he was a respectable companion a loving companion a devotee of the Prophet and one day he comes to the Messenger of Allah but he was in a state of distress he was very agitated and when the Prophet of Islam our beloved Messenger Prophet Muhammad may Allah bless him and his family saw Thu'ban in the state he asked him what what the problem was what was wrong Thu'ban and Thu'ban had a very thought-provoking reply that he gave to the Messenger of Allah what did he say he said to the Prophet when I leave your company when I leave Medina or I leave wherever you are in a gathering and I don't see you I'm saddened he says that today I was thinking that if I was going to make it to paradise if I was to die and make it to Jannah to paradise Thu'ban says without a doubt I don't think I would even see you and be in your company in paradise you're at such a status and how can I a simple companion a simple individual ever hope to see you in Jannah and then he says therefore I would never see you again and he says if I'm not going to make it to paradise meaning if I'm going to hell then my outcome is clear and again, once again I won't see you and so Thu'ban says that you see that the state that I'm in and this is why and why should I not be depressed in this world unless I'm with you I'm I'm sad I love I have that much love and intensity of care and concern and that that affection for you in the world to come I'm not going to be at your station in Jannah in paradise to be in your company and if I go to hell well that's all you know then there is obviously no chance of ever seeing you again O Messenger of God how did the Prophet of God reply to Thu'ban and how did he reply more importantly to you and I brothers and sisters on this day of Eid where we celebrate the return back to Allah the return to our nature as servants of God as those who have been purified through these last 30 days our sins have been burnt away our good deeds have increased multiple fold what would our response be or what are we looking for as a response from Allah to answer this question I'm sure you and I over this last 30 days have hopefully developed a better affinity for the Quran hopefully we've, we've begun to have a better love for the Messenger of Allah and we have a desire to study his seerah his biography in detail and to read the the biographies that are, have been written and translated about the Prophet and to watch and listen to podcasts and lectures available online uh, and we will uh, link to some of those in the description of this video but hopefully we have that love and desire now to actually become more acquainted with our beloved messenger the Prophet Muhammad may Allah bless him and his family 
Well, when Thoban made this statement, let me, go, let me go back to the story. When Thoban made this statement, at that point, a verse was revealed to the beloved Prophet Muhammad, may Allah bless him and his family. And in this verse found in chapter number 4, Surah An-Nisa, verse number 69, Allah gave such a touching and warm and beautiful response. And Allah told Thoban, told the other companions, and again tells you and I, that we have the ability, brothers and sisters, to be in the company of our beloved messenger. We have the ability to be in the company of the Ahlul Bayt, peace be upon them, to live beside Amir al muminin to serve Imams Hassan and Hussein, peace be upon them, to be a guest in the house of Lady Zahra, peace be upon her, to be there with Imam al-Sajjad, Imam al-Baqir, to discuss knowledge with Imam al-Sadiq, to learn from the patience of Imam al kadhim to visit Imam al rida to live in the company of Imam al-Jawad, to be humbled by the honor of being in the presence of Imam al-Hadi, to have the ability to serve Imam al-Askari, and ultimately to shake hands and to look at the beautiful countenance of Imam al-Mahdi, the savior of all humanity. And so in verse number 69, Allah says, أَعُوذُ بِاللَّهِ مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ الرَّجِيمِ بِسْمِ اللَّهِ الرَّحْمَنِ الرَّحِيمِ وَمَنْ يُتَئِ اللَّهَ وَالرَّسُولِ فَأُولَٰئِكَ مَعَ الَّذِينَ أَنْأَمَ اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِمْ مِنَ النَّبِيِّينَ وَالصِّدِّقِينَ وَالشُّهَدَاءِ وَالصَّالِحِينَ وَحَسُنَ أُولَٰئِكَ رَفِيكَ Whoever obeys Allah and the Messenger, as they must be obeyed, then those are, and in the hereafter, will be in paradise, in the company of those whom Allah has favored with the perfect guidance, the Prophets, and the truthful ones, those who are loyal to God's cause and truthful in whatever they do and say, and the witnesses, those who see the hidden divine truths and testify thereto with their lives, and the righteous ones and all their deeds and sayings and dedicated to setting everything right. How excellent they are for companions. After the Prophet receives this revelation and he tells Thu'ban this verse that look, you miss me in this world, you know, we love you as well. I, I, now, I, the Prophet didn't say this, so let me just actually take a step back, actually, and say that I'm sure that this was, or I would presume that this is what the Prophet must have been feeling or saying, that, you know, Thu'ban, if you really want to be with us, you really want to be with me in paradise, then there is an antidote, there is a solution for that, this verse. But the actual direct words of the hadith of what the Prophet Muhammad, may Allah bless him and his family, what he said to Thu'ban, he says, I swear by God, I swear by Allah, the, I swear by Allah, the faith of a Muslim will never be perfected, their iman will never be kamil, until they love me more than they love themselves, and more than they love their parents, and more than they love all of their relatives, and they submit to my command. This is what it is all about, brothers and sisters. This month of Ramadan has been about submission to Allah, submission to the Prophet, submission to the master of the time, the wali of the time. That is our 12th Imam, Imam al-Hujjah. May Allah hasten his return. And as long as we're on that path of servitude of Allah, following the orders of Allah, following the commands of the Prophet, following the dictates of the Imams of Ahlul Bayt, and that is obviously achieved through uh, the process of following the rules of Islam. And if we're not mujtahids ourselves and we are not able and we're not able in, in a position to do ihtiyat, then we follow the maraja taqlid that we're obligated to follow. And if we do all of that, then as the Prophet says, you're going to be with me in, pa in paradise. Now, one of the traits of Allah, which He describes in the Quran that He has and which He also bestows upon others is he abases those who deserve to be abased and humiliated and ridiculed and mocked in this world. And there are many people like that of the despots and tyrants who have no hope of fixing their ways. And Allah elevates those who deserve it. And so in chapter number 40, Surah Al-Ghafir, verse 15, Allah says, رَفِيُ دَرَجَاتِ ذُو الْأَرْشِ يُلْقِ الرُّوحَ مِنْ أَمْرِهِ عَلَى مَنْ يَشَاهِ مِنْ إِبَادِهِ لِيُنْذِرَ يَوْمَ الْتَلَاقِ the exalter of ranks, or exalted above all ranks and degrees, Lord of the throne of power and authority. He sends the Spirit by His command upon whom He wills of His servants, that He may warn the people of the day of the meeting. 
Allah, brothers and sisters, is both Himself exalted in rank, and He also exalts those in rank in the life of this world. Those that work with sincerity and true faith, Allah will raise them degrees that they would never imagine. And if we reflect on who has the greatest level of sincerity in this ummah, in this nation, within his speech, within his actions, and who is at the pinnacle of true faith, that is obviously none other than our beloved messenger, the Prophet Muhammad, may Allah bless him and his family. And as we know, he will enjoy the highest rank in paradise, along with the select members of his family, the Ahlul Bayt, peace be upon them. We too can seek to be with him by following the commandments of the Qur'an. Obedience to Allah, unconditional, unquestioned obedience to Allah. Unconditional obedience to the Prophet Muhammad. May God bless him and his, bless him and his family. And all that he expects from us. And this is obviously carried out in ways that we previously touched upon. And so that status which the Prophet has in Jannah, which... Uh, Hadith may try and describe for us what level of ranking the Prophet has. And ayat may try and come and describe the, bless the blessings of paradise. We know that these are just all simple words. Because the Hadith tell us that Jannah, that paradise is such that there are blessings there that no eye has ever seen. No ear has ever heard about and the minds, the intellect have never even thought about or been able to fathom what is there. And we pray to Allah that our month of Ramadan this year has passed with success, that we can be one step closer to that level of paradise, to be in the company of the prophets, the truthful ones, the witnesses, the people of godliness and piety. I conclude with a passage from supplication number two of the Sahifa Sajjadiyya of the fourth Imam, Ali ibn Hussein Zainul Abidin, peace be upon him, and where he prays to Allah and asks him to raise the rank of Prophet Muhammad, may Allah bless him and his family, to such a level that none would ever be able to imagine and fathom what that would be. As I conclude, we pray on this blessed day of Eid that we too can travel along with the Prophet Muhammad. May Allah bless him and his family as he ascends the ranks which Allah will grant him. And maybe we may not deserve it fully. But we ask Allah somehow, in some way, that Allah allow the Prophet to intercede for us, to take us by the hand and allow us to be in the company of the Messenger of Allah, even if but for a few minutes in the world to come. The fourth Imam prays to Allah as follows. He says, O oh God, so raise him, meaning raise the Prophet Muhammad, may Allah bless him and his family, because of his labors for your sake, to the highest degree of your garden, that none may equal him in station, none may match him in level. And no angel brought close or prophet sent out may parallel him in your sight. I conclude this blessed day of Eid message from our Ramadan Reflections 2022 series. Again, I thank all of the viewers, all of you who have watched and been with us for the last 31 days now. We ask you, if you have not yet subscribed to our YouTube channel, go ahead and hit that red subscribe button below. Click the notification bell so that as we upload new content throughout the year, that you will be directly notified when content goes live. Be sure to give the video a thumbs up, not only this video, but the past vid videos. Uh, and share with your friends this content. And God willing, we will see you before next Ramadan in Ramadan Reflections for 2023. But before that, inshallah, God willing, we will be providing more content throughout the year. Wassalamu alaikum jamian wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. And once again, Eidukum Mubarak on this blessed day of Eid. May Allah make it a day of Eid, a celebration for you and your entire family and the Muslim Ummah at large.